this computer program from 1970 predict 2020 kind of gives me a little bit of shivers guys that they were so accurate Oh, man, do I ever have a good one for you today. We have like 100 hours of time put into this one. So I think that you're going to be in for a really wild ride today. Let's jump into the world events where we are today. We all know that we landed on the moon 1969. Wonderful time. 50s and 60s were pretty good. But then in 1971, something funny happened, right? Remember, we went off the gold standard. A lot of trouble started happening. We also had the World Economic Forum, which nobody knew about for decades, right? But is on the news now a lot these days because they want the government to own all homes, all cars, all kinds of stuff. There's also another one, another club called the Club of Rome, and they've been around for decades too. These are unelected officials. They've been around forever. Now, let's take a look at a video from 1973. This kind of blows my mind, guys. 1973, they predicted all of this stuff that we're going to run into now. I can't even believe it. All right, so let me share this with you guys because I just am blown away by this, and I want to know what you think, okay? Check this out. It's going to be about three minutes. Originally devised by a scientist working from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, Jay Forrester. It was developed under the auspices of the Club of Rome by an MIT research team Club to Rome. present a complex model of the world and what we humans are doing to it. The program, called World One, doesn't pretend to be a precise forecast. What it does for the first time and Look at that computer, by the way, because this computer, I kind of have to laugh at it. The power that you have in your iPhone today is more than what they landed on the moon with. And this is what they're working with here. I find that hilarious. But this forecast is creepy. Man's man. history on the planet is to look at the world as one system. It shows that Earth cannot sustain present population and industrial growth for much more than a few decades. It shows that simply cleaning up our car exhausts and making some small effort to limit our families simply isn't enough. It's like an electronic guided tour of our global behavior since 1900 and where that behavior will lead us. Well, this is the printed version of what we've just seen on the television screen. And what looks at first to be just a maze of computer characteristics is really a system of very simple graphs which project what's going to happen to the planet over the next 150 years if we don't do something okay? drastic to stop it. What's coming up in 2020? Down the left-hand side of the graph is the date, 1900, 1940, 1980, 2020, right down to 2060. I'm so excited for you to see now, this. <laughs> each of these lines of, of, of letters represents a curve showing some aspect of the condition of the planet. The further out this way they go, the greater that figure is the further this way uh, the less for example p represents population so here it is at 1900 and then it comes up to 1940 it starts to take off here we are at 1980 up to the turn of the century and then it starts to peter off let's now have a look at this next curve the q curve which is the quality of life and this is represented by for example the amount of space people have the uh, amount of money they have to spend the amount of food they have to eat now, it increases rapidly up to 1940, but from 1940 on, the quality of life diminishes. Yeah, so that's all the time. That's baby boomers, right? From 1940 on, the boomers, and then after that, 1980 is where me and my brothers and everyone Here we are about born. the turn of the century, and we come up to the year 2020, and it's really come right back. More people, of course, means that you start to chew up your supply of natural resources. And this is this curve here. The end. Please remember this about natural resources. You see how it's decreasing the number of natural resources? We're going to come back to that. Curve that shows that slowly but steadily, the pool of natural wealth in the world, natural resources, minerals, oil, and so on, is slowly but steadily diminishing. So this is the situation. As population increases, the quality of life decreases, and the supply of natural resources decreases. But have a look at this curve here. This is called the Z curve, and it represents pop, uh, pollution. Now, predictably enough, as the population increases up to 1980, pollution increases. There's more rubbish. But from 1980 to the year 2020, pollution really takes off. This is assuming, of course, that we don't do anything about it. So the year 2020, the condition of the planet be starts to become highly critical. And if we don't do anything- Did you hear that? 2020, it becomes critical for climate. Critical for natural resources. 
The quality of life is going down. Thinking about it, this is what's going to happen. The quality of life is going to go right back to practically zero. Pollution is going to become so serious right out here that it will start to kill people. So the population will diminish right back here, less than it was in the year 1900. And at this stage, round about the year 2040, 2050, civilized life as we know it on this planet will cease to exist. Well, hopefully, of course, it won't be allowed to happen. But it's taken this kind of shock treatment to nudge governments into doing something. And so, okay, so I know that was a couple of minutes, you guys, but don't you find that fascinating? <laughs> I just, I find it fascinating because it's so simple, right? Because as you burn out all your natural resources and in addition to that population gets bigger, of course, you're going to burn out a lot of the natural resources and people could die from pollution. I mean, to me, it all just kind of makes sense. But I wanted to show you that because I was just blown away that this happens. Now, the cost of living has to go up when the population goes up because there's more demand on the few resources that there is. Everybody needs shelter. Everybody's going to need some kind of transportation. Everyone's going to need some food. But the cost of things keeps going up. Now, one of the things I wanted to show you is because I didn't know how to think about this until I went through certain plans. I wanted to figure out how could I find more things for me to keep looking at, I guess I would say. This is what I wanted to show you is in the beginning, this was an oil rig. Now, my family comes from Alberta in Canada. If you're down in a lot of the parts of the states, they have these types of things and you'll see them slowly and surely going pumping up and down. But this is the thing. If you go to countries like Kuwait and the, all of the Middle East, they got oil sitting down in massive reserves, billions of barrels sitting just below the sand. So it's really close. You just have to stick a straw in it and suck out billions of dollars. Okay, but what happens when you sucked all of that out? Now, what do you do for oil? Well, this continues on. Look at what we have to do now. Now we're looking for oil in a whole bunch of different areas. And then you have something like this, these oil rigs that are billions and billions of dollars to find the oil under the ocean, cut billions of dollars to build a stupid thing. After you build it, then to maintain it, they have to drag it from the oceans all the way back to Scotland to repair it, bring it back and continue drilling on the bottom of the ocean. Like the cost involved in that is astronomical. It could be 10 years before they even break even as opposed to what we got before, we just stick a straw on the ground and suck it out. Look at the increase of cost that has to be passed on to the consumer as we use those natural resources. So if you think about this otherwise, remember the gold rush in the old days? We used to just go to a river, pan some dirt, find some gold. Now, this is all the low-hanging fruit. What are we doing now to find gold? There's none in the rivers anymore. Now we're having to go back to this. Massive open pits. These monster trucks here. Here, which are the size that you know, can move a small city in these and we're having to dig all that out remember they got to take all that ore crush it with all of this oil after you crush it all and the oil is harder to get now then they have to nuke it you know boiling hot to boil that rock off of i mean it's so much more expensive there's no low hanging fruit there's no metals and everything near the top like the cost to get out these resources continues to get higher and higher and higher. Now, did you notice who this report was coming from? They mentioned Club of Rome. First of all, who on earth is the Club of Rome? Because you probably have never heard of these yahoos before. So just type into Google, who is the Club of Rome? The Club of Rome is an organization of individuals who share a common concern for the future of humanity and strive to make a difference. Okay, some of their members are scientists, economists, blah, blah, blah. Some of their members are all kinds of different things, right? So these people are not elected. They are not from one central government. It's like a club, literally. It's a bunch of dudes. Like, just think of your local chess club you know a bunch of guys get together and they have some ideas of what they should do with the world and they're going to throw that out there now we don't hear a lot about the club of rome who we do hear a lot about these days is the world economic forum now we see this they're on the news all the time from sending planes over there the world economic forum is an international non-government lobbying organization so lobbying trying to get governments to do what their ideas are founded in 1971 by a german engineer klaus schwab so some guy some dude one dude 
decides that he's going to form another club that costs billions of dollars to belong to and the world elite get there. And then once they get into one room and they all fly out there every year to Davos, once they all get there, they try to decide how the world is going to run. Now, he wrote three books. I don't even want to get into those books because if I told you what they say in there, you're going to think I'm some sort of Yahoo. This is where they only want the world to eat bugs. They want cameras in your house to see if you've licked the plate clean. You don't have a social credit score, but they want you to have a social and carbon slash credit score. They want all governments to own all the homes and all the cars and you rent everything for the rest of your life. They got a lot of like kind of out there stuff, right? So you got to be careful where you're getting all this news from. I find it very funny. I pulled up his picture here. This is Klaus Schwab right here. I mean, look at this picture of this guy. I mean, I had to pull it up. I can't help it. He looks like Dr. Evil, man. Come on, <laughs> tell me. This guy looks like Dr. Evil. It's very, very funny to me, you guys. So if we do something like that, I have to say, I think things are a little bit easier than that in my life. Now, let me show you what my dad showed me. <laughs> Don't laugh at my drawing skills here, okay, you guys? Because it's it's bad. <laughs> All right. So this is what my dad showed me when I was very, very, very young. Okay. So he showed me this chart and he drew this out for me. Now this right here, this is a partridge. Okay. Now that's a wild bird. So this wild bird that lives out there, just think of it. It's like the size of a chicken. This is your fox, by the way. <laughs> Okay, so don't laugh at my drawing, okay? This is the thing. Think of where we are. This is the population of the fox, okay? And the fox population goes up and down, and the wild partridge population goes up and down. Here's the thing. If there is a lot of birds up here, okay, see right here? If there's a lot of birds and very few predators, their population is down here. What happens? All of a sudden, the foxes will end up having a lot of food. When there's a lot of food around for them, all of a sudden, they can have two babies, three babies, four babies. The these wild animals have babies based on the amount and availability of food. So all of a sudden, more foxes, more foxes are born, more foxes are born, and they're killing more and more and more birds. But you see, when they kill more and more birds, you see that the population here is going down. And so it will keep dropping all the way to the bottom here where there are no birds. And when there is a position where there's no birds and a million foxes out there, now all of a sudden there's no food for the foxes. Okay. Now all the foxes die off because there's no food. But as they start dying off down here and they start heading down this way, well, now the birds have less predators and the birds can recover. And they start heading up and the cycle repeats itself and it goes on about a seven year cycle. It takes time for this to happen. Now, I come from a family that has fished and hunted my whole life for our own sustenance. We used to go pick up our own blueberries. We used to go get our own partridge. We used to go get salmon and fish. We wanted to try to be as self-reliant as possible. We even got our own honey, our own maple syrup. But that's just my family. But we noticed that some years there would be zillions of these birds out there. And some years there would be none. And we were like, how come? How does this happen? That this keeps on happening over and over again, right? But my dad was explaining to us the circle and how things are connected. So when you see this computer program from 1970, predict 2020, kind of gives me a little bit of shivers, guys, that they were so accurate. It makes me wonder, how did they actually guess this? But it's actually not that hard to imagine. As human population increases, so does pollution. Of course, more cars driving on the road, more natural resources being mined. I mean, that makes perfect sense, right? As pollution goes up, people are going up at the same time. And like I showed you with the natural resources that are out there, the natural resources will have to come down in availability as it gets harder and harder to get. Like we are showing panning gold or mining all of that huge open pit that's there. Some of them are not open pit. They're even under it, which is even more complicated. So that makes sense. And there does make sense that eventually pollution would be so high that it would kill off people. Anyway, to me, it was kind of chilling that they mentioned 2020. Is that funny to you? Is that give you a little bit of chills? Is that interesting to you? Because I find it very, very interesting. And it's funny how history repeats itself. Where we are in the stream of time right now, it's going to be very, very, very interesting. And things are happening every single day, especially with organizations like the World Economic Forum and so forth. They are pulling those strings and changing things a lot. Now, I specialize in housing. This is what we do is we want to make people money in real estate and do this over a lifetime. And so we do that by teaching people our systems. We have full courses available on that. If you are interested in any of those courses, you can go to contact at Rough Team 
Marketing.com. You can send us an email and we'll help you out on that. You guys, there is a lot of opportunity that's going to be coming up in the future. Remember that there will be a lot of inflation, a lot of money printing, but high interest rates as the governments need to suck as much money out of that system as they can. So you can use this to your advantage. Anyway, you guys, I wish you the very, very best. I hope you have a fantastic evening and I'll talk to you soon. <laughs>